Hi everyone, it's Henry here, and in this video we're going to take a look at one of our most requested army painting recipe schemes. It's for the Space Marine chapter, the Crimson Fists. Now the Crimson Fists have been around pretty much forever since 40k began, in the sense of very prominent in the artwork and we've seen many many iterations and, and versions of their colour scheme. So I've gone back to two of my favourite pictures that have them, and I want to try and achieve something of a similar feel to these images. That doesn't mean I'm going to copy them exactly or copy the colours exactly, but just take little aspects from them and try and create my idea of what a Crimson Fist would look like if I was to paint an army of them. And with army painting in mind, it means we're going to do it in as few steps as possible, make it as easily repeatable as possible, so we can get our army on the table in a reasonable time frame and looking awesome. So let's get to it. regards to sub-assemblies, although I know this marine is going to be almost entirely blue, I've still blue tacked on his backpack, his shoulder pads uh, and his head as well. And this is just to give me easy access to either those areas or perhaps some areas they might cover when we come to painting in some of the details later on. And I've just primed him Chaos Black. Over the black primer we're going to build up a grayscale pre-shade. And as usual, we're going to use heavily thinned Tamiya Flat White XF2. This is Tamiya's acrylic paint, and we're going to use their X20A acrylic thinner to thin it down with. And we're working at about four to five drops of thinner to paint. I'm spraying it on about 25 psi, and I'm using our Cult of Paint Infinity, which is a 0.4 mil needle and nozzle. See here, I wasn't quite happy with where his head was looking. Uh, try to find the golden angle whenever we're doing this pre-shade, so as, as the angle we want people to look at the miniature from. A lot of the time it's really obvious, actually with this quite open pose with him reloading the bolter, it's a little bit different. By using the very thin layers of the Tamiya white, as we build that up over the black, we create greys and we can build that up to become more and more saturated white. So areas of very, very bright light and areas of shadow. All that matters is we pick a light source from the front and a light source from the back. You can't look at both of those at the same time, so you don't need to worry about matching them up or anything like that. And every panel and every area of the model that we can see from either the front or the back, we need to make sure it's lit from that direction. So imagine that your airbrush is like a torch. And as you're shining it on the model, the areas of white are those areas of brightest light. When it comes to painting blue, a pre-shade actually isn't as important as with some other colours because blue is such a strong colour, it covers really, really well. But I like to always pre-shade my miniatures, at least my test miniature, just to get an idea of the shapes on it. And it will still benefit from the pre-shade, even if not as much as, say, something like a red skin. But here we go, we look around the model, it's pretty obvious where the light's coming from. We just made sure our highlights follow the shapes that we've lit. So spheres and cylinders predominantly on a Space Marine. For our first blue, I tried tons and tons of different blues to get uh, one that I liked. And in the end, I've gone for quite a heavily thinned Games Workshop Night Lords blue. This is a base paint, but it thins absolutely fine. I've used Life Color Thinner, but I'd be confident you could use Leo Thinner, Medea Thinner, anything like that. I'm sure you'd be absolutely fine. And I've thinned it probably three drops of thinner to one drop of paint. And I'm going to spray this onto the areas of highlight. I'm not fussed about hitting the areas of shadow with this. To slowly build them up, and you can already see what that pre-shade is doing. It's giving us different tones of the blue, just with one paint. And this was because I wanted that slightly desaturated blue that we see in the classic uh, photo, or sorry, photo, that'd be amazing, the classic piece of artwork with all the um, Mark VI Crimson Fists. So again, it's not exactly the same colour, but it's got that slightly more desaturated feel. It's always going to be tricky when you paint a blue space marine to make it not look like an ultramarine. Everyone seems to have a different interpretation of the blues, so just need to make one that you like. Then for the shadows, 
I'm going to use Vallejo Model Air Steel Blue. This is already a thin paint, it's formulated for airbrush use. I've thinned it further, just over one to one. And this blue I'm only going to aim into the shadows. You can see already this blue is a lot more saturated than the blue that we sprayed on to the highlights, so the Night Lord's blue. I felt it was important to give the shadows a bit of something. As I say, I've probably tried 10, maybe 12 different recipes to get this fist right. But already, I know I'm going to like it. It's evoking that same sort of feel to the artwork. Take your time when you're doing your armour colour, it's such an important part on a marine. There's no harm in using nice thin layers to build it up until you're happy. If we applied the paint too thick at this stage, it would just knock out any pre-shade that we'd done. And remember I said blue is a very strong colour, so if I got this blue over my highlight blue, it would change it a lot. Now very much an optional stage, but certainly one I like to do on my marines, is a little bit of edge highlighting. By no means to the degree, and certainly the degree of accuracy, that the heavy metal people, the guys do it, but I still like to add a little bit of definition with the uh, edge highlighting. And all I've done is add a drop of Vallejo model colour pale grey blue into the Night Lord's blue. I'm just going to highlight sort of around the face area, top of the chest, uh, the shoulder pads, the top of the arm, basically the, up, the upward facing surfaces that would catch the light. Perhaps you just save this for the character models. Say I enjoy doing it on all the marines I paint. And particularly because I've chosen with this scheme to keep everything blue, so the trim and all that, I may as well take the time to make it look as good as I can. Well, as good as I can, within reason. So you see I'm using the edge of the brush there, and just catching the sharp edges that we've got on the armour. Now for the fist itself, I wanted to use uh, not like a bright red you know, crimson colour that we've seen on, on some of them. I wanted that more desaturated look, again, that, that older sort of second edition vibe to it. So I've just used GW Barracknar Burgundy. It's this lovely, well, burgundy colour, I guess. And it took me about three thin coats to get a nice smooth finish on the hand. And to highlight it, I've just added a little more of that model colour pale grey blue into the Barracknar burgundy. It's always nice to use the same uh, paint to highlight up or lighten your colours with. can help with a, a sort of consistency across the model. Now I'm going to give the model a couple of coats of gloss varnish. Now I'm using Vallejo polyurethane gloss, still in my airbrush, 25 psi, and I've thinned it about three or four drops of my normal airbrush thinner to the varnish. Use whatever airbrush varnish you've got. It's not to protect the model or anything like that, it's just to reduce the surface tension so that we can perform the next couple of stages, which is our pin washing and our decals. Into a palette, I'm going to put some mineral spirits, in this case Winsor & Newton Sansador. It's an odourless, artist grade mineral spirit, so you can thin your oils with it and you can thin your enamels with it. And I'm going to use an enamel wash to pin wash this. Lots of different brands make them, my favourite one currently is Ammo by MIG. Uh, this one is an AK one and it's called Panel Liner for Blue and Grey, I think it's called. Um, but the, the key thing here really is it's, it's a dark grey enamel. So if I was using an oil paint, a similar colour would be something like Payne's Grey. But I really like the 
effect that we get from an enamel wash. And it was the direction I wanted to go with my Crimson Fists. If you want to check out pin washing or panel lining, I'll put a link up to a video we dedicated to it. I'm just going to work my way around the model, nice and relaxed, and just bring that definition into all those panels. And once all that's dry, and I did the decals overnight as well, left it overnight, it's nice and dry, now I want my final finish. And for this, I've used an ultra matte varnish. This is by Ammo by MIG. For the eye lenses, I wanted to stay away from red, because red's for baddies. So I'm going to base coat them in GW Incubi Darkness. I've also at this stage blacked out all of the other details on the model, but I didn't think that was particularly interesting. Then our first highlight on the lens is going to be GW Sotec Green. So we leave a little bit of the Incubi Darkness showing around this and in the top left corner of the right lens that we're doing. And then my final highlight is going to be P3 Arcane Blue. So we've just worked up effectively through a dark, a mid and a light turquoise. And finally, a little white dot in the corner to show a reflection. To highlight up the connective areas on the armour, I'm just going to use Vallejo model colour dark grey. Because I've done quite a lot of edge highlighting on the rest of the model, I felt it was important to do a little bit of highlighting on the black webbing that we've got on the armour here. You may have noticed also that I've changed the decals. Um, I used these really, really old uh, decals and they were, they were just awful. And I remember my buddy Liam had sent me these uh, custom fist ones he'd had done. Uh, a while ago so I thought I'd give them a go. For all the silver parts on the model I'm going to base coat them using GW Iron Warriors. This is a nice dark steel colour. Uh, if you don't have it it's a lot like adding a drop of black into your lead belcher. And I'm going to do the whole bolter in this uh, steel colour. I really really like bolters that look like that and I remember on the original artwork uh, they were all silver so I wanted to echo that a bit. Then for the little bit of leather we've got on this guy, it's just his belt. I haven't glued any pouches on. Certainly not something I tend to do when I'm building for an army. I try and leave off quite a few of any extraneous bits so they just take longer to paint. So giving it a base coat of Rhinox Hide and then a little highlight with Scale 75 Dubai Brown. Just a much lighter brown. Something like um, Mournfang Brown from GW would work just as well here. So the key is just getting that nice big step between the base colour and the highlight colour when we're doing the leather. Whilst I've got the Rhinox hide, I'm going to do just a little bit of chipping on this guy. And rather than use a sponge, I'm going to actually paint the chips on. I don't want too many on there. I think the enamel wash has already given us that nice sort of grimy look to him. So just those areas that I think will get the most damage, so sort of leading edges, certainly lower down the model, shoulder pads, things like that. And then on the odd edge, I will just use Iron Warriors, so a, a silver. Again, we're trying to keep the amount of paints down, so again, it's just quick. You're not reaching for different pots when you're painting it. You've got them all in front of you and you can do different parts of the model with these colors. Ultimately, if I ran out of Iron Warriors, I just use Lead Belcher and you wouldn't notice the difference. And finally, a little bit more sort of dirt and grime, I'm going to do a little bit of oil washing. And here I'm using a black oil and a brown oil. In this case, uh, black by Abtalung 502 and the brown is Burnt Umber by Windsor & Newton. I fill a little mixing dish. Uh, if you want to try and find them, just search for metal mixing dish for paint. And I'm going to make up a brown wash. And I'm going to wash this mix into all the silver areas on the model and a few of the little 
uh, armor panels. So things like down around the feet, again, around the shoulder pads, just the areas that I want to suggest have taken the most damage. And I want to make it a touch darker, so I'm going to add a drop of the black in. But you'll see when I come to paint the model, it wasn't quite as dark as I wanted, so I just add some black onto the model itself and then dilute it down. Again, where the wash wasn't dark enough for me on the silver, I put a little bit of the neat black oil on there and then just brush back in the little wash mix and dilute it down on the model itself. You notice we haven't varnished again over the paintwork we've done. You don't need to. As long as your acrylic paint is dry, this oil and the mineral spirits isn't going to do any damage to it. It's not going to react with it at all. And then finally, when that's dry, because it does dull down the metal quite a lot, just going in with a really bright silver, in this case Vallejo Model Air Steel, I'm just going to catch the very edges of the silver parts on the model. Just bring back a little bit of that reflective element to the silver, a little bit more definition and contrast. You see there's so few actual colours on the model, silver, blue, this is when it's basically it, right? So it's worth taking a little bit of time to get them looking right. And here he is finished. Uh, I'll pop down the powders I used on the base, but it's just how we do all of our YouTube or most of our YouTube basing. I'm really happy with how this guy came out. As I said, we get a lot of requests to do Crimson Fists. So I wanted to make sure I was pleased with the result. And I know I often say I get a bit tempted. Um, I really, really, really got tempted uh, to do a little force after painting this guy. What I am going to do is for our next Army Painting Plus video for Patreon, I'm going to be taking a Redemptor Dreadnought and showing how I would translate this scheme onto that and obviously adding the extra details that we'll get on the Dreadnought. We recently did that with the Dark Eldar, uh, Cabalite Warriors and a Raider something we're going to be doing quite a lot of going forwards. Painting a basic troop type here on YouTube and then looking at how we'd paint the other key models in that army over on Patreon. The Crimson Fists are such an iconic chapter and part of the 40k sort of folklore really. Anyone who's been in the game for any length of time. So I'm really pleased that I got to give this guy a go and pop him up on YouTube to share with you all. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, let me know in the comments and let me know what other chapters or other armies you'd like to see some troop types from. Hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't because it really helps us out, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>